Hello, this is Diver with an Arvin Lowe. I'm doing tutorial number two, which is something I would consider a pretty simple tutorial, and it's just taking high resolution close up portrait shots. Uh, portrait meaning just shots of your face, although you could really use this for close ups of anything. I'm talking about doing a close up shot for skins, for jewelries, for makeups. Uh, mesh heads, anything you're trying to shoot that you need to get a really nice close-up shot of. I realize these snail cam settings uh, may make some of you laugh, but I like to use the snail cam to uh, do some minute maneuverings when I get close into the face. If you are not familiar with the alt zoom option on Second Life, hitting alt brings up this little zoom button and if you click on the area you want to zoom, in this case I want to zoom in on my face, you hold the button down and you can zoom in on the face. And if you hold Alt and Control, you can also rotate without moving back and forth. So we've sort of gotten kind of close to the face. Do a little bit of minute moving. But this is kind of like a selfie angle and that's not really what we want to do for a portrait. We want it to look more like a professional portrait that was shot by someone else. The other thing we need to worry about is posing, and if you're going to zoom out you may want to use an actual animation, but for the kind of shot I'm talking about, I actually prefer to just use the pose stand. So I'm going to use the arms downward, legs together pose, which leaves you these sort of outward evergreen tree arms, and the reason I do that is because it spreads the shoulder out a little bit. When you have the arms straight down, it kind of deforms the shoulder and it doesn't look really natural. So. We're going to zoom really close in on this eventually, so it's it's going to hide the weird arms. Now we don't really have the right angle that we want, so we need to zoom in in a different way. We're going to use this sort of camera zoom option using control and then the number zero. So if you hit control zero, you will see that your camera starts to zoom in straight on as opposed to zooming in at an angle. There are other ways of doing this, but this is the way that I find is the easiest to teach, so we're going to use that option. You can zoom in really pretty close to the face and then just adjust how you want to be in. Now, if you get too close to the face, you can hit Control 8 to move back one step, or you can hit Control 9 and that will take you all the way back out, but we don't want to go all the way back out. So we've zoomed in really close on the face and you can see that I have a lot of clarity here. The reason for that is actually my wind light settings. My wind light is set to have no shadows basically and also I have turned off the advanced lighting model. The advanced lighting model is a great function for shadows but when you're doing a shot like this shadows actually make it look less clear because you end up with these sort of bruised looking areas and we don't really like that because those shadows aren't really where we want them and if we want to add shadows we kind of want to do it ourselves or no shadows at all but either way this looks much clearer than it does with ambient occlusion and the advanced lighting model on so we turn off all of these lights we don't need any of that and then on wind light we'll choose a setting that has no shadows which would be like this strawberry sing setting we want to make sure advanced high-res snapshots, advanced uh, menu, high-res snapshots, enabled, check mark, woohoo. And then also we want to make sure that our level of detail settings are very high. And also uh, jewelry makers will thank you for having your level of detail high when you take photos because it makes them look much better. It's going to give you this warning that tells you that if you um, use it, you could severely impact your uh, settings or your experience or whatever. So you don't want to mess around with most of this stuff. But if you hit LOD in your search bar and you scroll all the way down the bottom, the very last thing is render volume LOD factor. That's a level of detail factor. The highest you can do on your menu is 4, but in here you can go up to pretty much, I actually don't know what the top number is, but I go to 7. It shouldn't really impact your performance if your 
if you have a computer that can do anything decent and you're not at a high lag area, this really should not impact you too much. It doesn't change anything for me at all. I can have it on even when I'm at arcade with 30 people that are causing lag hell, I can still have my LOD at 7 and it won't really make a difference. So having your LOD really high is important to making sure that you look your best, especially if you have fine detail chains like nose chains, things like that. So we have set up all of this stuff, everything looks really good here, and now we can actually take our snapshot. You can close this if you don't need it. So we can take our snapshot. So it's pulled up this snapshot uh, window. Now by default it's going to say your current window. Uh, we're saving to disk your current window. So current window is actually really small. We don't want to do that because we want to have as high a quality as possible. So we want to choose custom, the custom settings. Now in theory what you should actually be doing is increasing uh, the size of your photo by multiplying the size of your screen. So if you have a screen at a certain resolution and you multiply by two that is the width and height that you do here. I don't really do it that way because uh, my computer couldn't handle that so it kept crashing or maybe not my computer but Firestorm could not handle me doing that so I keep mine around 4500 um, width and then I change uh, my height depending on what kinds of shots I'm doing. So this is sort of a landscape shot so if you want to make your proportion smaller, if you want to do like a square type of photo, you can also uncheck constraint proportions and then just change these numbers and it'll reduce the size of your snapshot. But for the sake of this, we just want to keep it uh, constrained. And my format is PNG lossless. Then we can just save it as whatever we would like. So we're just going to save this as Win face woohoo whatever two because we just made win face woohoo whatever one when I tried to record this tutorial before and I didn't like it so we'll save that so we've created this uh, face shot and now we can go and pick it up from wherever we saved it open it up in Photoshop or whatever program you use doesn't have to be Photoshop I use CS6. and eventually it will load. So now you will see just how big this actually is. So if I zoom in on 100%, look how much detail you see here. And that's not pixelated, it's just clean detail. So the size of your photo makes a huge difference in the quality of your photo. And on Flickr, it only will zoom in to a certain amount but having the ability to have such high resolution even when you don't see the the full shot really makes a huge difference and it's easier to edit because you can do really minute editing details if you wanted to. Um, this is a Genesis head on a Maitreya body and we're gonna fit it to the screen now this is a huge file size, it's like 30 megabytes, so we don't want to try uploading a 30 megabyte file into uh, Flickr sometimes or to take up space in our WordPress accounts. So actually there is a way to save this and still maintain the quality level of your photo. So we're going to go, after we've done whatever editing we want to do, if we want to do any at all, we're going to go to File and Save for Web. So this is going to load your photo into the save for web option. So I am setting mine at uh, JPEG. We want to choose JPEG, high. And I have my quality at 73, but you can put it at sort of whatever you want. The higher the quality, um, the bigger the file. If I save it, uh, it with these settings, it's going to save at about 1.5 megabytes as opposed to like 30 megabytes. So we click save and it opens up a window. You can change this. I call them web when I save them for web. And you don't lose any detail but you have much smaller file size because 
this kind of resolution is something that you really only need for if you were doing like a poster or something in real life. You don't need to have it at such a large file size for the web. It will still maintain the quality if you have the right settings. So now you have been able to take a photo in theory in a really high resolution and hopefully this helped. Catch you next time.